Gay Records video on Saturday, the 2nd of March, 2024, just gone 8.59pm Chicago time. Do hope you are doing well. So it's the weekend and time for another weekend futures market recap. We'll go through 15 of the largest futures markets and I'll show you what I'm seeing on my charts. Do hope you had a good week's trading. As per usual, we're going to go through the E-mini charts first, then I'm going to revisit two of the charts from last weekend, the Euro chart and the Gold chart, both the long-term charts there to show you what happened this week, because we had a little bit of a U-turn. And then we'll go through each of the 15 tip bar charts and look at the triple signals and what is popping up at the moment. So here we go. We're back to the daily chart of the E-mini and the rally continues. We're up at 5,146. The background's in red, which means we're in a confirmed uptrend in terms of price and volume. I know it sounds like a little bit of a broken record there, but better sine wave is printing the bars in red, which means we're in an uptrend. We haven't broken any supports, and so we're still technically in an uptrend. And then on the left-hand side, better pro-am, the trailing stop for better pro-am is miles away and hasn't been trailed up because we've seen no blue professional bars in order to move that up. Uh, at some point, this pullback to end of trend on the highest time frame here on the daily chart will come into play. Sometimes you get a sinking up with that resistance when pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame pairs with that and they both go off at the same time. But what we're seeing on all of these charts is the trend is strong because we keep on pushing up and up through these resistances, just keep on pushing and breaking and they're not getting in the way at all of the activity. Last time we had a pullback to end of trend here, you can see back in September of 23, this resistance, we bounced off it straight away and then had weakness from there. This one's come in and we've just pushed straight through it. We thought about it for a couple of days and then we just pushed straight through it. Just means the market trend is strong. No blue fresh up bars, no exhaustion buy patterns up here, no flush patterns. The only thing that we had this week was three little amateur bars on that little dip. So this week's activity, we kind of started a bit weak, held for a couple of days and then we ended the week pretty strong. So a couple of amateur bars during the middle of the uh, week with not much activity, low average trade size, low range and so on. But we just bounced straight off that. And when I show you the lower time frame charts, you'll see all the momentum patterns uh, that led to that reversal. So there we go on the daily chart. We're still in an uptrend. We've got to go see a blue professional up bar uh, before all of this is over. So that will be the signal when the professionals are starting to take profits on those higher time frames. OK, 135 minute chart. Here you can see we're just pushing through those resistances time after time. So this one, we bounce off a little bit. Support comes in on the intermediate time frame. It's a pullback and an uptrend. And then we've got another resistance. We just push on through it. Another resistance on the intermediate time frame. We just push on through it. And you can see each of these we're just pushing through. This one, we had a little bit of trouble. We bounced off that on that lowest time frame. But then the support came in. And we immediately bounced from there. On this time frame, you can see that was an exhaustion sell pattern this week. So there was people... Uh, forcing the market down, getting rid of some players here. They just use that opportunity to jump in and uh, push the market back up again. And there's the strength of that selling. The exhaustion patterns usually get mirrored. And what I mean by that is the amount of selling that took us out on this downward swing needs to be mirrored by profit taking on the upside. So again, we've had all of this selling at that point. That's generating a little bit of a vacuum in the market from which we can bounce. And we've got to go see a similar reading on the upside before we get an exhaustion pattern up there. Here, the trailing stops a little bit uh, tighter, but again, no blue professional bars in the last couple of weeks activity. So we're just sitting there, confirmed uptrend of background in red. Then down to the 45 minute chart here, you can see the last couple of weeks activity. We had a Rambo pattern sequence there. We've got some weakness from there. We gapped down and then gapped up. This week's activity, there's the little amateur up bar there. We got a little bit of weakness from there, but we just turned around. Again, we just keep on pushing up through all of these resistances. The bars are still red and the trailing stop on this time frame is miles away. So again, we're in an uptrend until we see some profit taking blue professional bars and uh, trailing the stop up. 15 minute chart. Here we add the beginning and the ends of the weeks with solid yellow vertical lines. And this is this week's activity. So last week's activity, we maxed out a little bit with the whole family there of Rambo patterns into those highs. Had a little bit of weakness at the beginning of the week. Ended up with an exhaustion sell. A bullish divergence pattern comes in and a flush pattern at the end of the week. This is what turned us around during this week's activity. And it came in with a lovely little triple support here on better sine wave on the 15 minute chart. So you can see the triple support is there. All three numbers are in red. Support on the high, the intermediate and the lowest time frame. They're nice and tight there, right there around the 50, 70 type level. 
and with the exhaustion cell on the bullish divergence comes in, test there, and then as soon as we start breaking through resistances and resistances here, we're into another confirmed uptrend here. Trailed the stop up a little bit with blue professional bars, getting that move going, busting us out of that uh, area into new highs above 5100. So there we go. Those are all the daily all the way down to the minute charts. Let's look at the tip bar chart, the 13,500 tip bar chart. I got a question this week by emails like, why am I looking at the minute bars and the tip bar charts when they're so close? Because the tip bar chart, this level is looking like a 20 minute chart compared to the 15 minute chart here. Why do you look at the two? And the reason for that is that with the daily data only, we don't see any overnight activity. And sometimes the overnight activity is really useful for filling in these little gaps. You don't get these gaps in the market here. It's nice and smooth. You can see there that's what's going on uh, during the overnight activity. And so this week's activity, we sold off a little bit, exhaustion sell, bullish divergence comes in and then a flush pattern comes in here bottoms us around this level, what is that, 5060 type level, and then the blue professional bars come in here by that little U-turn there, amateur bars down, testing into that move with exhaustion sell patterns, again, gives us a little bit of a vacuum in the market and we can rally from there until we see a similar type reading in terms of momentum buying on the upside and we broke into a confirmed uptrend there. So that's this week's activity. But the tick bar charts I like, they're a little bit more accurate in terms of measuring the professional activity, looking at the average trade size, but it also brings in all of that activity with the overnight session. So it comes into really clean patterns on better sine wave. If we look at this, this is interesting. We talk about the pullback to end of trends rippling through the time frames. So we're in a downtrend here and we see the first left shoulder of an inverted head and shoulder pattern with a pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame. And then we come in and we make the pullback back to end of trend on the intermediate time frame. So that's the head of the movement. And that's coming in with their beautiful little triple pattern. We've got triple support. It's an end of trend on the intermediate time frame. We've got support on the highest time frame. We've got support on the lowest time frame. Lovely little triple there. We break away, but it's not into an uptrend yet because we can't get through resistances. We bounce at that point. We come back in, form a flush pattern again, flushing out the last of the sellers, and then that's when we're breaking into a confirmed uptrend. Again, we got support behind us. We went through a little cycle. I talk about the second cyclical turn after an end of trend. So here's pullback to end of trend on the intermediate time frame, then one cyclical turn on the intermediate time frame, and a second cyclical turn after an end of trend on that intermediate time frame. The end of trend marks the end of the trend, and then we need to go through a little bit of basing activity before we then break into the next trend move, which could be a reversal. In this case, it was to the upside. So we've gone through our trending move. It's ended the trend. We've then based a little bit by going through support to resistance to support, and then we can break through resistances and break us into another uptrend. Another triple pattern going on here. Resistance in terms of the uh, low, intermediate, and highest time frame. Again, pretty close, 11, 14, 16. Nicely close in there. We've got our exhaustion sell at that point. Again, getting rid of a whole bunch of sellers. And then all of their stops are being run as we break up through 51.20 into a new uptrend. And it's important that it's a triple pattern there because that means that we've got to go make pullback to end of trend on the low and then the intermediate and then maybe the highest time frame as well. Similar to this, we put in pullback to end of trend on the low, the intermediate, it happened to sync up with resistance on the highest time frame there. And that's what gave us this pattern, this reversal pattern mid to late last week. So there we go, a little bit of detail in terms of the 13,500 tip bar chart, but the cycles are nicer on a tip bar chart. They're still good uh, on the 15 minute chart here, but I think you'll agree, just seeing all of these ripple through, that's a really nice sequence that's happening here. And you can really see the detail in what's going on compared to a minute chart here where we don't have the overnight activity. The, having that extra data overnight is really useful in terms of filling in that cyclical activity there. So there we go, e-mini charts all the way down from the daily to the 13,500 tip bar chart. Let us revisit the euro and the gold chart. Not going to revisit the dollar index chart there because the dollar index has a lot of Japanese yen component. And I want to keep it a little bit tighter here with the discussion of the euro, what's happening there, and gold. 
Last weekend's video, we talked about maybe the dollar index was going to strengthen and the euro was going to drop through 108, 107 and a half and continue down. And the reason why I was uh, concerned about that was we had a stair step trade on the euro. So this is the 460 minute uh, chart of the euro. This is with better pro am. This activity that we had, we maxed out with an exhaustion buy and a bearish divergence with a whole family of Rambo patterns. Rambo patterns with exhaustion is unstable at that point. That's the amateurs leading the way, trying to get it up through uh, 112, while they're being wrong-footed immediately turns around and goes the other way. And then next time we see blue professional bars come in, they're on the retrace here at 109. And typically that's a good pattern for a stair-step trade. In this case, the professionals gaming it up into that 109 level and then selling it down super hard. And you'd expect we had nice continuation from here to 107, and it looked like this trade was working out to the downside. The test that we had back up, the high there came in under uh, the trailing stop from Better Prime. That was a super important level at 109 and a bit. It didn't get through there. We got to test that, got rejected, and we started to weaken this week. But with uh, the final bar of uh, Friday's activity, this is looking a little bit strong. Uh, it's similar to the bar that we had on gold last week, which I talked about the last bar on the uh, 420 minute chart of gold uh, was unusually strong and this week we've had a rally in gold so let's just look at these charts big picture we've got the 460 minute charts volume and price here we've got the daily chart volume and price and we have got confirmed downtrends in each of these time frames the backgrounds in gray we're beneath the trailing stop on better pro am and the bars are white on better sine wave so in terms of price and volume we're in a downtrend, but we've got triple patterns going on on all of these better sine wave charts. So here we've got triple support on the high, intermediate and lowest time frame. And a break up through this 109 and 40 level would break us into an uptrend there. That is a possibility with this next week's activity. We've had our exhaustion sell and bullish divergence. We raced away with Rambo patterns and an exhaustion pattern, which was unstable. And we've come back in to test this level and possibly 107 is holding at this point and we're going to be breaking through 109 hasn't happened yet the bars haven't turned red same thing on the 460 minute chart here we'd had a nice little pullback to end of trend on the lowest time frame syncing up with cyclical support on the highest time frame here and we've got a triple support going on you can see each of the bars at the end of the day uh, I can't get that onto the uh, recording time frame, but you can see the levels are all red, which means we've got a triple support happening at that point. It's important at this level here, if that level holds and we start breaking up through 109, all of a sudden all bets are off and this trips the other way, reverses the other way. What we had with the gold chart, and I'll show you that next, is blue professional bars taking us out through that uh, resistance level. So let's go to the gold chart. Again, last week's video... I talked about the last bar on Friday's chart last week was this red bar here. I said that that was unusual if we're going to have a continuation of the downtrend in gold. That was a strange bar to have and that we'd immediately need to get rejected at that point and go the other way. And that was maybe just professionals using that as a little uh, spike to encourage people in and then immediately they use it as a way of shorting and getting back down through this 2000 level on the supports but they didn't it held it held it held and then Thursday and Friday's activity bang we took off to the upside there the bars have turned uh, red we have not turned into a confirmed uptrend yet because this is what happened on the professional picture so we had similar to the euro chart where we had a stair step trade here it seemed to be selling off nicely then went nowhere and now it's looking like a reversal a u-turn uh, happening here so on the last bar or on friday's activity a big strong blue professional bar takes us through 2060 up to just under 2100 here and that looks like having had the exhaustion sell bullish divergence of flush patterns down here that looks like it's going to turn around and all of a sudden we're going to go from a black background a dark what i call it, a dark zone there and turn us into a confirmed uptrend we've already got price signaling that we're breaking above the professional bars here so i'd be looking for that on monday or tuesday's uh, trade and let's see if that's the case with gold and that was the signal of a u-turn i'd expect something similar 
on the euro if we're really going to see a U-turn here. I'm not sure what news events are coming up for the eurozone in the next uh, few days, but let's see if we get a strong blue professional bar breaking us through this resistance at this point. And then we've got ourselves a nice little uptrend and the next place that we'll be looking at is uh, 112 to the upside. So it's been a little bit junky on the euro for the last several weeks, up, up and down, can't really decide which way to go. But when we get the direction right, it'll be a strong trending move. It'll be worth jumping on board. So let's just uh, wait and see what happens. Lastly, tip bar charts, the 15 of them. Let's just roll through these really quickly and just see what uh, signals popped up this week. So this is the euro chart. L the end of last week we had uh, signal short, the triple signal going on there. Didn't really go anywhere this week. There's these blue professional bars come in, the 1500 tip bar chart holding at this level down here, but we've not had the break up through resistance. This will form a triple pattern if we get that break because we've had exhaustion sell and bullish divergence. We're oversold with the background in red. We just need to break through that trailing stop at eight and a half and that'll trigger a triple signal on the euro. British pound, we had signal short this week, but blue professional bars seemingly holding at that point. Supports come in here and we've rallied above. So I think the pound and the euro, if they're going to go, they're going to go together. Aussie dollar, same thing. We had a short signal here, but it's really in the wrong place. Exhaustion buy, bearish divergence, no blue professional bars. They're miles away there. So a little bit of a spurious signal. In terms of the testing here, just a lot of junky blue professional bars kind of coming down into this zone at 65 and we've rallied from there. Japanese yen, Japanese yen still disappoints. We had a signal, a couple of signals long in the middle of this week and then we got into trouble. 67 and a bit, blue professional bars come in and sell it down really hard. So we're in no man's land with no blue professional bars on the Japanese yen. E-mini last week had a nice signal midweek and we had a rally from there. You take profits when the trading stop is broken on better prime up here. And then midweek after this little bit of a decline, a little bit of weakness that we had at the beginning of the week, the triple signals start to go off bang and we're racing away on the E-mini. 10-year notes uh, last week. We had a nice little rally at the end of the week from that triple signal. Didn't really go anywhere and we've had triple signal short at this point. Not really worked out and gone the other way. So that bearish divergence was based off there must be an exhaustion pattern yet sitting behind that arrow. So not good signals on the 10-year notes. Gold and silver. Gold, we did rally at the end of this week. We had some signals short at the beginning of the weeks. So those didn't really work out. Not many blue professional bars behind those signals. We really just had the one there. So that didn't work out at all. Blue professional bars have held here and we have rallied above those. So that's good on gold. Silver, we did rally at the end of this week. We had one at the end of last week, but we continued to sell off. But this week, that's where we started to rally. But again, no blue professional bars at the lows on silver. So that was interesting. Bitcoin. Bitcoin is taking a little bit of a breather after an explosive move this week up to 64,000. No signals to take profits at this point. We're trailing the stop up. We've got no blue professional bars for exhaustion buy at those highs. These blue professional bars, we didn't see them up here on these peaks or on this peak here. So we're still on an uptrend in terms of professional activity and Bitcoin. Crude, crude, it would have been nice to see a signal this week in crude because we had exhaustion sell, bullish divergence, blue professional bars come in, but it was never oversold enough. You can see this is overbought with the background in grey, but we never got the background in red there to say it was oversold on the downside because that would have been a nice trade on uh, crude and that's rallied from there. Natural gas signaling short at the moment, bang bang, up here at 190. And copper. Copper, we had a signal long here, still deciding whether to go or not at that point. So let's see if uh, copper strengthens this week. And then the AGs. AGs, we had a signal long this week, but it's weakened from there. Some blue professional bars come in at that point. So not convincing yet on corn. Soybeans, soybeans, yes. So beginning of the week, a couple of triple signals. We had a whole bunch of blue professional bars coming in with the end of last week's and beginning of this week's activity. Blue professional bars here. We need to get through the highs of that to get com confirmation and turn better pro-am around on soybeans. And lastly, wheat. Wheat, no signals this week. We've got blue professional bars coming at the lows, but no exhaustion sell. And we're playing off these exhaustion buy patterns and bearish divergence there at that point. 
So there we go. Apologies, a bit of a longer video there with some discussion of uh, cyclical patterns and tick bar charts on the E-mini and also uh, the euro and gold. So this week, let's see if we get a continuation blow off type move on the E-mini. Let's see if the euro really does switch around because that'll be interesting if that starts to join in. And lastly, Bitcoin. Let's see if it gets through uh, 63,000. That'll be good this week. So I hope your trading is going well and looking forward to next week's trade.